Hello, and welcome to the Maine Department of Education's informational session on submitting a proposal for 21st Century Community Learning Center's funding. I'm Travis Doughty, the State Coordinator for Maine's Title IV programs, and today I'll be sharing information to help you prepare a 21st Century Community Learning Center's grant proposal. If you have questions, please keep note of them during this presentation. All questions must be submitted to the department in writing using the submitted questions form located in Appendix I of the Request for Proposals or RFP document. All submitted question forms are to be submitted via email to travis.w.doughty at maine.gov by no later than 11.59 p.m. local time on Wednesday, February 7, 2024. A summary of questions and answers will be posted to the State of Maine's RFP website the following week on or before Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. The agenda for this presentation is as follows. First, we'll go over some information related to the purpose and background of the 21st Century Community Learning Centers program. Next, we'll cover the RFP itself and various program requirements. Some elements are new, while others are the same as in previous competitions. After looking at the basics, we'll discuss the elements of high quality programs and the process for developing meaningful and realistic goals. Finally, we'll walk through the online application and share details regarding both the peer review and grant award processes. Throughout the remainder of this presentation, the term 21st century program will be used in place of the longer 21st century community learning centers program. Similarly, the term department will be used in place of the longer Maine Department of Education. First, let's go over some background information on the 21st Century Program. The 21st Century Program is a federally funded education program enacted under Title IV, Part B of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act as amended by the Every Student Succeeds Act of 2015. The purpose of the 21st Century Program is to provide opportunities for communities to establish or expand community learning centers. These community learning centers, also known as program centers or program sites, are characterized as elementary or secondary schools or similarly accessible community facilities where grant funded activities take place. These centers are also defined by a physical location where a consistent group of staff delivers grant funded programming for students and their families. Per federal legislation, there are three major requirements for every federally funded 21st century program site. The first of these requirements is providing opportunities for academic enrichment. Now, academic enrichment refers to programs and activities that supplement, enhance, or reinforce the learning that takes place during a student's regular school day program. Academic enrichment is not, however, repetition or continuation of a classroom lesson. Study halls and homework help do not constitute academic enrichment. A simple example of academic enrichment for elementary school might be a cooking activity in which students measure ingredients using fractions learned in their math class. An example for middle school might be a cultural event to celebrate a country that students are learning about in a social studies class. An example for high school might be a community or service learning project that incorporates interdisciplinary learning from various classroom lessons. Service learning may also help students meet certain graduation requirements at the high school level. Secondly, every 21st century program must offer a broad array of additional services, programs, and activities that serve to improve the growth and development of participating students. These additional services can include youth development, service learning, nutrition and health education, drug and violence prevention, counseling programs, arts and music, physical fitness and wellness, technology education, literacy, mathematics, science, career and technical programs, internships or apprenticeship programs, and lastly, other ties to an in-demand industry sector or occupation for high school students. Overall, these activities encourage students to develop into well-rounded and healthy adults who are contributing members of their local community. 
And lastly, every 21st century program must provide opportunities for families to have active and meaningful engagement in their child's education, including opportunities for literacy and related educational development. For example, families might benefit from workshops on how to support their child's education in school or at home, or even periodic check-in calls to discuss their child's positive contributions to the program. Some families can also benefit from instruction in English as a second language, job readiness trainings, and opportunities to better their own computer or financial literacy skills. 21st century programs must engage the parents of participating children in ongoing educational programs and services. Occasional family events, while encouraged, are not sufficient to meet the family engagement requirements of the 21st century program. Each program site or center funded through the 21st century program must meet each of these three requirements. A grant recipient may not meet these requirements for, by providing one component at a program site serving one cohort of students and another component at a different program site serving a different cohort of students. All components must be provided at all program sites that receive 21st century funding. In terms of student attendance, the intent of the 21st century program is for students to attend the program for at least 30 days each year. This is the amount of time which designates a student as regular attending and has been identified as the minimum amount of contact time necessary for a student to experience a substantial positive impact from attending a 21st century program. In Maine, 21st century programs must also primarily focus their services to students who are low performing. A student's designation as low performing is based on the results of state and or local standardized assessment results for that student. Based on these assessment results, students who are low performing are considered to perform below grade level expectations in math and or literacy. Students who perform well on standardized assessments, but for various reasons may not perform well in their normal classroom during the school year are not considered low performing for the purposes of the 21st century program. In combining these terms, all 21st century programs in Maine must focus on providing services to RLP students, meaning students who are both low performing and receive regular support services from the 21st century program. There are currently 34 21st century programs operating 58 program sites around the state, totaling just over $5.6 million in funding. Currently, school organizations in Maine represent just under half of the state's 21st century programs, with non-school organizations being the lead agencies for roughly 53% of the 21st century programs in Maine. As part of the state's current competition, it is anticipated that roughly $3.5 million will be made available to fund various types of proposals submitted in response to the RFP. The following is a timeline for this grant competition. The RFP was released to the public on January 9, 2024, and proposals are due to the State of Maine Division of Procurement Services by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on April 10th, 2024. Only those proposals received by the Division of Procurement Services prior to the stated deadline will be considered during the department's review process. Proposals received after the 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time deadline will be rejected and will not be considered for award. After all proposals have been received, the department will screen each proposal to ensure that all eligibility requirements have been met and determine which proposals qualify for priority points. In April, all eligible proposals will be reviewed through a formal peer review process. Selected proposals are tentatively scheduled to be announced in May, after which time grant award and contract preparations will begin. Funding and thus programs awarded under this RFP are anticipated to begin on July 1st, 2024. It should also be noted that awarded programs will be expected to begin with an educational summer program for students in July of 2024. Should you have questions related to the RFP, please be sure to submit those questions in writing to the RFP coordinator 
by no later than 1159 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday, February 7th, 2024. Next, let's talk about the specific requirements of this Request for Proposals, or RFP. Any public or private organizations that meet eligibility requirements can apply for 21st Century Program funding, including school organizations, nonprofit agencies, city or county government agencies, faith-based organizations, institutions of higher education, Indian tribes or tribal organizations, and for-profit companies. Any such organization must also be based in Maine and provide services for students and families residing within the state. For the purpose of this RFP, the term school organization will be used to refer to public school administrative units and local education agencies. Proposals must be submitted by an eligible organization and at least one other lead partner organization. These partnerships must include at least one school organization and one other non-school organization, such as a nonprofit or for-profit organization, a faith-based organization, a local government agency, an Indian tribe or tribal organization, or an institution of higher education. Either the school organization or non-school organization may be designated as the lead applicant who will act as the fiscal agent for the grant and be responsible for both grant finances and the overall administration of the 21st Century Program. Please note that under this RFP, fiscal agents shall be responsible for both the oversight of grant finances as well as the achievement of deliverables set forth in a potential state contract for 21st Century funding. In order for a 21st century program proposal to be considered eligible for review, it must propose to primarily target students who attend schools that either are eligible for Title I school-wide programs or have a free and reduced lunch rate of at least 40%. If an applicant proposes to serve students from more than one school, at least two-thirds of the students the applicant is proposing to serve must attend a school that meets one of these two eligibility criteria. Now, you may wonder how to determine whether a school is eligible for 21st century program funding. At the moment, there are two ways to determine the school level eligibility. The first is to consult Appendix H of the RFP document, which contains a list of schools in Maine currently implementing school wide programs under Title I of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Another method for determining whether a school is eligible is to review the department's ED 534 report for fiscal year 2024. Any school named within this report that possesses an eligible percent of 40 or greater is eligible to be included in an application for 21st century program funding. Now, please note uh, that a school that does not meet eligibility criteria above may still be included within a 21st century grant application, provided that at least two thirds of the students served by the resulting program do attend an eligible school. This type of scenario could occur in a larger multi-site program serving students from multiple schools where at least two thirds of the students served attend an eligible school. In order to be considered eligible for review, potential proposals must also be submitted jointly by one lead applicant organization and one lead partner organization meet the definition of a new expansion or renewal proposal as defined in the RFP document, include an assurance from the school organization included in the proposal that it will contribute a minimum of 35% of the overall cost of transporting students to and from the 21st century program on an annual basis, and lastly, meet all other requirements and deadlines set forth in the RFP such as obtaining required signatures. More specifically, these requirements mean that proposals submitted in response to the RFP must be submitted jointly by an active partnership between at least one school organization 
and one other non-school organization. Individual organizations are not eligible to apply for 21st century program funding without evidence of this active partnership. Potential applicants must also submit a proposal that aligns with one of the three proposal types, meaning new, expansion, or renewal. Additionally, the school organization included within the proposal must agree to contribute to the 21st century program just over one third of the total cost of transporting students to and from the 21st century program each year. For example, if a program's annual transportation cost were $20,000, the school organization would be responsible for 35% of that cost, or $7,000 in total. The remaining $13,000 could be paid for with 21st century program funding or other funding the applicant may have access to. For more information related to eligibility requirements, please consult pages 9, 10, and 11 of the RFP document. Funding awarded under the 21st Century Program may be used to establish or expand community learning centers, which provide before school, after school, and summer educational programs for students and their families. 21st Century Programs are expected to provide comprehensive educational programs for participating students. However, such programs may also be somewhat tailored to meet the specific needs of students enrolled in the program, as well as their families. In terms of customizing a local 21st century program to best meet the needs of students and families, the federal government has established guidelines around the activities that 21st century programs can include. These allowable programs and activities consist of academic enrichment, mentoring, remedial education, and tutoring programs, the provision of well-rounded educational opportunities, literacy education, including both financial and environmental literacy, programs that support a healthy and active lifestyle, including nutrition education and structured physical activity programs, services for individuals with disabilities, programs that support the academic achievement and language acquisition skills of English learners, cultural programs that build cultural competencies and awareness, programs emphasizing telecommunications and technology, expanding library service hours, programs focused on parenting skills, family involvement, and family literacy, support for students that have been truant, suspended, or expelled, programs focused on drug and violence prevention and counseling, STEM education opportunities, partnerships with in-demand fields of the local workforce, and lastly, career competencies and readiness. Funding awarded under the 21st Century Program can be used for a broad array of programs and activities that advance student academic achievement and support student success. This list of activities is meant to guide the range and types of programming that potential applicants might consider in the design and development of their proposed program. For more in uh, for a more comprehensive list of allowable activities, please consult pages 11 and 12 of the RFP document. The contract term for all awards resulting from this RFP will consist of a one-year contract period and up to three different one-year renewal periods for a total award of up to four consecutive years. The anticipated start date of all awards made under this RFP is July 1st, 2024, with the expectation that awarded applicants provide a summer educational program for students beginning in July of 2024. The continued funding of programs from one year to the next is contingent upon both the continued availability of funding from the federal government, as well as the satisfactory performance by the grant recipient in meeting its established goals and objectives each year. Individual awards resulting from this RFP 
can range in size from a state minimum of $75,000 to a state maximum of $325,000. Applicants requesting funds to operate a single site program may request an award ranging from $75,000 to $175,000. Single site programs must operate only one program site. They may, however, serve more than one school by having what are known as feeder schools, which send students to a central program site where 21st century programming takes place. An example of this might be a local community center that serves students from three area middle schools. Applicants requesting funds to operate a multi-site program may request an award ranging from $75,000 to $175,000 for the first program site and up to $75,000 for each additional program site. Multi-site programs must operate at least two and no more than three program sites. Multi-site programs may also implement a feeder school model dependent on the needs of the locals community. Award amounts for the 21st century program are based on per pupil funding for the number of students who reach RLP status. In other words, per pupil funding is not based on the total number of students a 21st century program serves but rather the total number of RLP students the program serves. It is important to consider the eligible student populations to be served when determining both how many RLP students will be served annually and what level of funding will be requested. At no time may a proposal's funding request include a cost per RLP student that exceeds $3,000 for a single site program or $2,700 for a multi-site program. To determine a proposal's cost per RLP student amount, one must divide the total request amount by the number of regular, low-performing, or RLP students the program commits to serve each year. Please note that this number should be set at a realistic level as the number of RLP students a program must serve cannot decrease over the life of a 21st century grant award. Additionally, the continued funding of programs not meeting enrollment targets may be called into question during the department's annual review process. Applicants are encouraged to explore a level of funding that is both reasonable and necessary given the population of students and families the proposed program can realistically serve each year. Since its inception, the 21st century program has been intended as what's called a seed program, meaning that over time, funded programs work toward becoming self-sustaining. To that end, all awards resulting from this RFP will be based on a funding reduction model. What this means is that over time, 21st century grant awards will be gradually reduced with the expectation that providers secure additional funding from other sources in order to provide the same level of services to the same number of students and families each year. Under this RFP, 21st century funding for successful applicants will be reduced by 3% annually. Applicants must have a plan for securing other funding and resources in subsequent grant years to supplement this reduced funding from the 21st century grant award. Under this RFP, each proposal may receive up to a maximum of seven priority points. Priority points will be awarded based on three different sets of criteria, which pertain to the school or schools targeted within a proposal. Up to three priority points will be awarded to proposals based on the relative poverty level of the school or schools included within the proposal. The department will be using the eligible percent data point within its ED 534 report for fiscal year 2024 to determine poverty level for the purposes of this RFP. In the case of a multi-site program, the department will average the eligible percent of all schools included within the application to determine an overall poverty level for that application. 
Up to two priority points will be awarded to proposals based on the ESEA accountability status of the school or schools included within the proposal. For the purposes of this RFP, the department will be using each school's ESEA school profile to determine the accountability status of the school or schools included within the proposal. A proposal that includes one or more tier one or tier two schools will be eligible to receive one priority point. Proposals including one or more tier three schools will be eligible to receive two priority points. Please note that ESEA accountability status is worth a maximum of two priority points. This means that proposals including one or more tier one, tier two, and tier three schools will not receive additional priority points beyond the two point maximum. Lastly, up to two priority points will be awarded to proposals demonstrating strong evidence that the school or schools included within the proposal serve students who are at high risk of dropping out of school, being involved in crime or delinquent activities, and or who lack strong positive role models. Please take note that agencies applying for multiple grants as well as current recipients applying for additional grant awards will be limited to a maximum annual amount of $1.25 million in funding across all current and newly submitted applications. In other words, no single agency in the state of Maine will receive more than $1.25 million worth of Maine's 21st century program funds in any single fiscal year. In terms of program implementation, there are some important program requirements that all applicants must be aware of. These requirements include operational targets, youth service or enrollment targets, employment requirements, and program collection and data reporting. While these are some of the most basic requirements for implementing a 21st century program, they are some of the most important when it comes to annual performance reviews. As such, it's important for all applicants to be informed and intentional when developing these aspects of their proposed program. Applicants seeking 21st century program funding in Maine must meet or exceed the state's minimum operational requirements. For both school year and summer educational programming, this means 21st century program sites must operate for at least the minimum number of program weeks, days, and hours each year as established by the department. School year programs must operate distinct programming for students at each program site. However, multi-site programs may choose to implement a consolidated summer program where students from each site attend summer programming in a central location. In this example, programs may benefit from economies of scale reducing the overall cost of operating a summer program. All 21st century program sites must also provide services during times when school is not in session. This can include time before school, after school, during school vacations, on weekends, or holidays. The 21st century programs often provide special programming during February and April school vacations particularly if programs have been missed due to snow days or other school closures. Twenty first century programs to the extent practical must focus on providing services to students who are low performing and who attend the program regularly enough to benefit from it. In order for a student to reach RLP status, that student must be both low performing and reach at least 30 days of attendance in the 21st century program over the course of the year. When setting enrollment and attendance goals for the 21st century program, it's important to consider the long term trajectory of the program. For example, is there an expectation that student enrollment will increase over time? Is there a chance it could decrease? It's important to set realistic youth service target for the program 
as the target presented in the proposal, if funded, would become a permanent annual target for the next four years. Failure to meet this established target could also impact the continued funding of the 21st Century Program. Please also note that at no time may a program center or site serve fewer than 25 RLP students over the course of the year. When considering the school or schools from which students will attend the 21st Century Program, it's important to consider the eligible student population and the likelihood that potential that the potential student population can meet the state's minimum enrollment requirements. Every 21st century program must employ a director to oversee the effective implementation and long-term sustainability of the program. For multi-site programs, this individual must be a full-time employee and spend their full 40-hour work week solely on the 21st Century Program. Program directors may not hold a full-time 21st Century funded position in which they are also doing work not related to the 21st Century Program. Directors of single-site programs are only required to be employed at 30 hours per week, but an agency may choose to hire a full-time employee who either also acts as a site coordinator or who may do other work for the organization to make up the remaining 10 weekly hours of the position. In addition to a program director, every 21st century program center or site must employ a site coordinator who is responsible for planning and overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the program. Think of this person as a lead teacher or perhaps project manager who worked with other staff members to develop and deliver a quality educational program for students and their families. This individual must be employed at a minimum of 20 hours per week. As previously mentioned, single site programs may opt to have someone fulfill a dual role of both program director and site coordinator. In these situations, the individual would not be required to be employed at 50 hours per week. Rather, the full-time equivalent position for both roles would be set at a year-round 40 hour per week position. Please note that program directors overseeing larger multi-site programs cannot act as permanent site coordinators. The requirements for both positions are significant enough in larger multi-site programs that they cannot be completed in a standard 40 hour work week. The 21st century program providers will also be expected to report required program data. This will include general information about the 21st century program, as well as student level data for all students enrolled in the program. In handling this sensitive information, it's imperative that school organizations and non-school organizations properly adhere to the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, or FERPA, and also seek parent permission to access their child's information where applicable. Oftentimes, the easiest place to collect parental consent for sharing required program data is during program enrollment as part of the program's enrollment paperwork. In all situations, particularly those where a non-school organization is the fiscal agent for the program, open communication regarding program data is key. In order to ensure that data can be shared in a timely manner, Partnering agencies should develop a plan for sharing required program data during the de proposal development process. This may include the development and execution of a data sharing agreement that covers the specific data needed to complete federal reporting for the 21st century program. Please note that failure to provide required program data by established deadlines will negatively impact programs during the department's annual review process and may impact continued funding. For more information on tracking program data and other 21st century program expectations, please refer to Appendix G of the RFP document. Alongside basic program requirements, I will touch briefly on some basic financial requirements for the 21st century program.
The 21st century program is bound by a special statutory provision known as supplement, not supplant. This provision requires that awarded 21st century grant funds must be used in addition to and not in place of other federal, state, or local funds that might otherwise pay for an intended grant expense. For example, think of a school that provides a late bus home for students participating in sports. If such a school were to receive 21st century funds to provide after school programming for students, 21st century funds could not be used to pay for the entire cost of all late bus runs the school makes. This is because without 21st century funds, the school would still be providing transportation home for students who are participating in sports. 21st century funds could, however, be used to supplement the additional cost associated with longer bus runs to transport more students who are participating in the 21st century program home after the program ends. In this example, 21st century funds are being used to supplement the additional cost of providing a late bus home for more students. 21st century funds are not, however, covering the entire cost of the late bus so that local funding can be freed up for other purposes. Such a shift of local expenses onto federal taxpayers would be an example of supplanting and a violation of federal law. It is important to keep this distinction in mind when planning and budgeting for 21st century program services. The various types of expenses that 21st century program funding can support fall into one of two broad categories, direct costs and indirect costs. Direct costs are those that are easily identifiable with a particular cost objective. For example, wages paid to 21st century program staff or transportation costs to bring students home at the end of the program are easily identifiable as being directly associated with the delivery of a 21st century program. Conversely, indirect costs are those that are incurred for a common or joint purpose and are not easily identifiable with a single cost objective. Examples include salaries for chief executive officers or business office staff who work on multiple programs and for the benefit of an entire organization. These are considered indirect costs and may not be charged to a 21st century grant award without the applicant having an approved indirect cost rate agreement in place. Proposals may include funding for both direct and indirect costs, provided that the total amount of indirect costs does not exceed the restricted indirect cost rate that is approved through the applicant's cognizant agency. For successful applicants, the allowability of indirect costs will be subject to the satisfactory review of an existing restricted indirect cost rate agreement or the negotiation and approval of a new restricted indirect cost rate agreement. This means that while an applicant may include indirect costs as part of a proposal, an applicant will not be reimbursed for indirect costs without having executed a restricted indirect cost rate agreement with their cognizant agency. For planning and budgetary purposes, it's important to be aware that a restricted indirect cost rate differs from traditional indirect cost rates. Restricted rates, as the name suggests, are restricted to a lesser amount than standard indirect cost rates and typically fall in the range of 2 to 5% of the grant award, depending on things like the total amount of the grant award and the finances related to the organization applying. For more information on indirect cost rates, please consult pages 38 and 39 of the RFP document. For successful applicants, payments for services provided will be done through a reimbursement model. This means that a grant recipient must first expend its own funding on approved grant activities before seeking reimbursement from the department. Successful applicants will complete requests for reimbursement through the department's online grant management system, which serves as an online portal for submitting and processing payment requests. Applicants should be aware that this reimbursement structure and the resulting payment requests may take up to 30 days to process. 
applicant organizations must have sufficient cash flow and appropriate plans in place to comply with these requirements prior to submitting a proposal. Next, I will share the elements that are important to creating a quality 21st century program and setting appropriate program goals. Twenty-first century programs involve a comprehensive approach to providing quality expanded learning opportunities for students and their families. In the next few minutes, I will focus on what is involved in creating a quality 21st century program and sustaining that quality through the life of a 21st century grant. Ensuring that a 21st century program is of high quality includes many moving pieces, but most high quality 21st century programs typically meet the needs of students and their families, build and maintain effective, active, and meaningful partnerships, have meaningful involvement of students and their families, foster positive youth development, develop and achieve quality objectives and outcomes, and regularly evaluate program effectiveness and make adjustments to continuously improve the program. In the need for programs section of the RFP, it is important to clearly describe the community where students and their families live and go to school. The characteristics of the population and community to be served are essential factors that inform the design of a successful 21st century program and ultimately drive support for students to enroll in that program. Be sure to ref reference local data, which may include poverty, education level, and or other data related to the needs of the local community. A proposal should convey a concrete understanding of the community, as well as what services are not currently available to students and families in order to demonstrate the need for a 21st century program. Be mindful to provide data that is current and specific enough to strongly support the need for a 21st century program in the local community. Families should also have the opportunity for active and meaningful involvement in their child's education. Providing literacy and other educational development opportunities for families and students is an essential piece of 21st century programming, along with academic enrichment and youth development. Opportunities for families should be ongoing and include a number of different opportunities. These may include computer literacy classes, GED classes, English as a second language services, helping develop job readiness skills, etc. While it is of value to invite families to the program for celebrations and other events, there must also be a focus on regularly engaging and educating families beyond such standalone events. Twenty-first century programs are comprised of partnerships between organizations dedicated to education and positive youth development. These partnerships include at least one school organization and one other non-school organization who work together to see that the needs of students, families, and communities are met. The most effective partnerships begin prior to working on a proposal when different agencies regularly discuss opportunities to collaborate. Under this RFP, each applicant must describe the planning time and activities that went into the development of their proposal. Applicants should also allocate time for collaborative planning and professional development to build strong systems for program delivery. A solid partnership should be evident through all stages of programming, from initial planning through implementation to evaluation. It's obvious to members of the department's review team when partnerships are thrown together at the last minute to apply for funding. Whenever applicable, include information related to the history of collaborative work between partnering agencies included in the proposal. Partners must also have a substantial role in the program's delivery of services, as well as the ongoing management and oversight of the program. Applicants must ensure that their programs are designed to intentionally include regular contact and work with their lead partner organization to develop the local 21st century program and achieve its goals. 
It is also important to discuss with school partners how records will be accessed for evaluation and reporting purposes. At times, this can be a stumbling block between schools and outside agencies. Be sure to address this potential issue as part of your initial planning for program implementation and consider implementing a data sharing agreement. Connecting with the school day program is another important aspect of the 21st century program and developing strong partnerships to promote this connection is paramount. Each proposal must describe how program activities will be aligned and coordinated with school day education and intervention programs, as well as how 21st century program staff will coordinate with school day teachers and building principals. School day teachers and building principals must be able to regularly coordinate with 21st century program staff to ensure that services are well aligned to school day programming and established program goals are met. A quality 21st century program establishes a strong collaborative relationship with students, families, and the communities they serve in order to achieve program goals. Students and families should be involved in all aspects of the program, beginning with planning and design. One potential way to receive initial input is to gather information from student or parent surveys, focusing on wants and needs for extended learning opportunity programs. All stakeholders, including youth, families, and community members, need to have a voice in the design, structure, and services of the resulting 21st century program. There are several questions to keep in mind when thinking about how to involve students and families in your program, including how will consistent and active participation be promoted from the start, and how will families be involved in the decision-making and planning processes? Once the program is implemented, what opportunities will youth participants have to express their ideas, concerns, and opinions? How will program staff communicate with families about manners concerning their child, as well as information about the community resources to meet their needs? When evaluating the program, how will students and families be meaningfully involved? What methods will be used to gain insight and feedback from these most important stakeholders? These are just a few of the important questions to consider when planning and developing your 21st century grant proposal. Positive youth development, along with academic enrichment and improvement, are at the heart of the 21st century program. These programs not only help participating youth build core academic competencies, but the programs and services they provide also help build character and resilience among the children and youth they serve. For a 21st century program to be successful, it's important to have a balance between programs and activities that support both the educational and social emotional development of participating students. For example, a student's afternoon in the 21st century program may include time dedicated to academic tutoring and mathematics, followed by a service learning project where a student must learn to work with peers and adults to achieve a shared goal. In this example, the student not only receives needed academic intervention, but also has opportunity to build important developmental assets. It's important that not every day of programming look the same for every child. Students need opportunity for autonomy, choice, and leadership to keep them engaged, learning, and growing. The goal of all 21st century programs across the country is to enable local organizations to plan, implement, or expand learning opportunities for the benefit of the educational, health, social, cultural, and recreational needs of students and their families. Specific to the state of Maine, six program goals guide the work of all 21st century programs. Those goals are academic improvement, health and wellness, educational enrichment, family engagement and education, sustainability and collaboration, and professional and staff development. Each of these goals, 
described more thoroughly within the RFP, are designed to guide the work of 21st century programs across the state. These goals also align with the department's strategic plan for providing quality education to the students, families, and communities of Maine. All proposed outcomes within a proposal for 21st century program funding should be developed using the SMART goal framework. This means all outcomes should be specific with detailed program strategies and activities to help support the achievement of said outcomes. Proposed outcomes must also correspond with the defined performance measure and indicator specified in the RFP so that progress toward all outcomes can be effectively measured. It is also quite important that outcomes be attainable and realistic. Stating that your program will have 100% parent participation or that 95% of students will improve their academic performance on standardized assessments from one year to the next may not be realistic or attainable. It is admirable to create a rigorous set of outcomes to promote positive achievement for the program, but applicants must not set the bar so high that desired outcomes will be out of reach. Doing so will hurt the program during the annual performance review process as each funded program is held accountable to the achievement of outcomes set forth in its application for funding. It will be important to review currently available information before setting specific targets for the 21st century program. Each proposed outcome should also have a timeline for progress, which will help the data collection to measure the success of students and the program. As was the case with operational expectations and use service targets, proposed outcomes may not be decreased over time. So effectively balancing both rigor and reality is key when establishing goals for the program. The template for establishing program outcomes are located within Appendix D of the RFP document. In the example provided, there are several performance measures and indicators related to the stated goal of academic improvement. It will be the responsibility of each applicant develop, to develop both proposed strategies and activities, as well as proposed outcomes for each defined performance measure within this section of their proposal. Most performance measures within this section of the proposal are defined, meaning that either the department or federal government have established a requirements required performance measure for all 21st century programs. There are, however, certain performance measures that provide applicants with some flexibility and choice. The strategies and activities related to each performance measure should describe what participants, program staff, and or other stakeholders will do in order to meet the proposed outcomes set forth in the application. The indicator used field refers to the tool or tools that will be used to measure progress and or success in meeting the specific proposed outcomes within a grant proposal. In this case, both state and local standardized assessments are used as indicators to measure changes in student academic performance over time. It is important to ensure that all proposed outcomes included within an application align with the corresponding performance measure. In the example provided, each of these proposed outcomes should be an overall percentage of the program's RLP students. As a reminder, applicants must make sure that all proposed outcomes are specific, measurable, attainable, and realistic with a reasonable time allocated for successful achievement. Creating a quality 21st century program also includes basing that program on the measures of effectiveness as outlined in federal statute. These measures include an assessment of objective data to support the need for such a program, meaning each applicant should be able to provide the need for a, prove the need for a 21st century program through current specific data regarding students, families, and the communities where they live, the development of an established set of performance indicators to track program implementation and ensure that services are high quality. 
This is done through Appendix D of their proposal. The use of research based program activities to help students reach state and local academic standards. When providing services in areas where scientifically based research is available, such as core academic subjects like reading and math, a 21st century program should employ strategies based on that research. Measures to demonstrate successful student outcomes that are aligned with academic program of the school and state determined performance indicators. And lastly, ensuring that the program obtains and maintains access to the necessary data to inform decision making and quality improvement efforts. What this translates to for applicants is the need to plan for and adapt programming based on timely and accurate data. Sound planning, appropriate performance indicators, a focus on research based activities, and regularly reviewing program data are all key to developing a quality 21st century program. Applicants are reminded to keep these measures in mind as they go about the development of their grant proposal. Speaking of data, Main Leverage is a web based data collection and reporting system for the 21st century program, which all grant recipients across the state must use. This comprehensive data tracking and reporting system consists of data around things like student attendance, demographic data, state and local assessment scores, program activities, and more. Applicants should be aware of this reporting system and the requirement of its use from the onset of programming in order to gather necessary data throughout the year. Parental consent to access student information is of the utmost importance and should be included as part of each program's enrollment forms and process. Each recipient of 21st century program funding is also required to undergo a periodic evaluation to assess its progress toward achieving the objectives and outcomes set forth in its approved grant proposal. These periodic evaluations include a blend of self assessment and formal evaluation of the program. The results of these evaluations must be used to refine, improve and strengthen the program. In addition, such results must be made available to the public upon request. There are many benefits to self assessment and evaluation. Collecting concrete data about a program allows stakeholders to be consistently aware of program quality and areas of potential improvement. In addition, the data can be used to prove prior success and future need when seeking additional funding and resources to sustain the program. Next, I will walk through the various pieces of the online 21st century grant application. For this grant competition, applicants are to complete, certify, and print their proposals through the department's online application site. Official electronic submission of the proposal, including all required signatures, must be made to the State of Maine Division of Procurement Services via email to proposals at maine.gov. Please note that this is a separate submission requiring applicants to print the completed application from the department's application website, obtain the required physical signatures, and submit a scanned PDF document to the Division of Procurement Services. This official electronic submission must adhere to the specifications set forth on pages 18 through 21 of the RFP document. Official electronic submission of the proposal must be received by no later than 1159 PM Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. Any proposals not received by this deadline will be rejected and will not be considered for award. All interested parties intending to submit proposals under this RFP must complete and submit the required intent to apply form located in Appendix F of the RFP document. This form provides key information needed to determine eligibility and to generate the accounts and users needed to complete proposals through the department's application website. 
Please note that this form is due to the RFP coordinator by February 21st, 2024. Organizations that meet this February 21st submission deadline, but do not meet eligibility requirements, will have until February 28th, 2024 to revise their submission. For more comprehensive instructions on the intent to apply form submission and review process, please consult pages 17 and 18 of the RFP document. To get started using the department's application site, you'll need to visit the online application site and create a unique password for your account. Please note that the URL for the application site is provided within the RFP document. When first attempting to log into the department's application website, you'll need to enter the email address provided for the lead contact person noted for your organization's completed intent to apply form, and then click on the link for forgot your password. On the screen that follows, you'll need to click confirm. This will generate an email to the lead contact person for your proposal which will include instructions on creating a unique password for their account. This combination of username and password will be needed to log into the system and access the online 21st Century Grant application. Upon first logging into the application site with your username and password, you'll be greeted with a landing page from which you can select the organization's 21st century grant proposal. Please note that this screen may look different for different users and will depend upon what other federal funding applications your organization may or may not have access to. Be sure to select the appropriate fiscal year application you wish to access. In this case, you'll want to select the 2025 to bring up the 21st century application for this year. Then click on the funding application link to access the application. This brings you to the online 21st century grant proposal for your organization under the current RFP. Below, you'll see various sections of the RFP Appendix A, Appendix B, etc., that will need to be completed. However, before any work on the proposal can be done within the system, the user must change the status of the proposal to draft started. This will make each of the pages of the proposal editable and allow the user to begin completing and saving various sections of the application. As you navigate through the various pages of the 21st Century Grant Proposal, it will be important to periodically save your work. This is done through the Save and Go To button located at the top of every data entry page within the proposal. The system provides several options, including saving and going to the current page of the proposal to ensure the updates were successfully made. There are also other options, including saving and returning to the Sections page, which serves as the main menu for the online grant proposal. Once all work on the proposal has been concluded and your organization is ready to certify and submit its proposal to the department, there are a few key steps that must be done in the correct order. First, be sure to check the validations column for any errors that might prevent the submission of your proposal. These can include things like required fields not having responses or financial data not aligning between budget forms. Be sure to review these and make any needed corrections prior to certifying the proposal. Once all validation errors are resolved and your organization is ready to continue with its submission, be sure to change the status of the proposal to draft complete. This must be done before the proposal is printed and required signatures are obtained. The last step within the online application site 
is to generate a PDF version of the 21st Century Grant Proposal that can be printed and signed. This is done by clicking the print link next to the 21st Century Community Learning Centers Program subheading within the online application. Upon clicking the link to print the proposal, you'll be given the opportunity to name the PDF document before it is created. You will also be asked for your email address and to select a print scale for the PDF document being created. In order to meet the submission requirements outlined within the RFP document, please be sure that you select the medium 75% print scale option before printing your document. Once you've created the desired document name and provided the other requested information, click on the print icon. This may take a bit of time, but the system will work to generate a PDF version of your proposal that can be printed. Shortly after generating a, the PDF version of the proposal to be printed, click on the MDOE resources link from the left hand navigation pane. It is on this page that you will be able to download the completed version of your grant proposal and obtain required signatures before submitting to the Division of Procurement Services. Please do keep in mind that submitting your proposal through the department's application website is not the final step in the submission process. All applicants must print their proposal and obtain all required signatures prior to officially submitting the proposal electronically to the, to the Division of Procurement Services by the April 10th, 2024 deadline. Once the proposal deadline has been reached and proposals for 21st century funding have been received by the state, the process of reviewing proposals and issuing grant awards begins. Following the submission deadline, the state will conduct an initial review of all proposals to ensure that each meets the requirements for submission set forth in the RFP. This review will also help to inform what priority points each applicant qualifies for. Once this initial pre-screening has been completed, each proposal will be assigned to at least three peer reviewers who will each conduct an independent review of the proposal. Following this independent review of proposals, each peer reviewer will come together and score each proposal one at a time following a consensus scoring approach. In other words, this team will come to an agreement of point valuations for each section of the proposal based upon the scoring weights noted within the RFP. Please note the department administers the peer review process, but its staff does not score applications. The department selects peer reviewers from outside of the department, ensuring that a large diversity of backgrounds are represented. The department also provides training for peer reviewers so that they are appropriately prepared for the task of reviewing and evaluating 21st century grant proposals. Once the peer review process is completed, there are several additional steps which must be taken before selected programs can begin operations. After the department notifies applicants of the proposals that have been selected for 21st century funding, the department must begin preparing contracts and grant awards for those proposed programs. After being reviewed by the state's Division of Procurement Services, grant contracts will be sent to the applicant to be signed by their CEO and then returned to the department. Both the department's commissioner and the state's purchases review committee must also approve contracts before they become final. This final review process can take several weeks and potentially require revisions or amendments to grant contracts. Once grant contracts are processed and approved, funds will be made available through the department's grant reimbursement system and programs can begin their proposed activities as of the start date 
outlined within their approved contract. The process for completing contracts may feel a bit cumbersome and does take time. However, once that initial contract is in place, funding and contracts for subsequent years tend to go much more smoothly. The department understands that you may have follow-up questions regarding the RFP. Please be sure to submit your questions using the submitted questions form located in Appendix I of the RFP document and submit those questions to the RFP coordinator at the email address provided on this slide and within the RFP. All questions must be received by the RFP coordinator by no later than February 7th, 2024. A question and answer summary will be posted to the department's RFP website by February 14th, 2024. On behalf of the department, I would like to thank you for your time today and wish you luck in your pursuit of 21st century funding.